you will be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't heard of the Bloody Mary game. Though there are a few variations floating around, you will mostly find kids telling someone at a sleepover to say Bloody Mary in front of a dimly lit mirror three times, the rumour being that she'll appear. She never does. There's a reason for this. Everything you know is only a part of the ritual, started by people who knew all the steps and felt the Asuka didn't have what it took to complete it. A few rumours, and it's the widespread urban legend it is today. Nowadays, very few remember how to perform the full ritual, or even know that there is one. To begin, you'll need a few things. Some easy to get household items, and some ingredients that will be harder to get. Starting from the easiest, you'll need something that will represent Mary. It's recommended to use a humanoid shaped object, a plushie, a doll, or even a bear. Feel free to weave straw into a human shape. That's how they did it in olden times. A mirror. This will have to be one kept in your house. Don't worry about pedantics, like if it's a silver coated back or not. Some optional tools, things like a fire starter kit, matches, a lighter, etc. A source of water, any liquid will do. You can even improvise some tools too. Learn all the steps and see if you can come up with some creative tools. A tool to extract blood. And a place to keep samples of blood. Whether it's rough or clean is up to your discretion. But whatever it is, you'll need it for the harder to attain ingredients. For the harder to get ingredients, you'll need four samples of blood. Your own. This is the easiest to get. Your family. A friend. And an enemy. You'll only need about a drop of each. How you go about this is up to you. However, something to note. They have to be alive before and during the game. Some games can last a long time. So choose people who have years left, not months. To prepare for the game, place a dab of each sample of blood on each corner of the mirror. Do not worry about the shape of the mirror, as long as you can place four separate dots in a square shape. Next, take your tools, the vessel and blood with you to a remote area far from your house. It's recommended not to start too close or it may make the game much harder to complete. Once you find a suitable spot, put a drop of your family, friend and enemy's blood on the vessel. Never your own. That'll mean you lose immediately. Do whatever it takes in your power to never let this happen. Once the blood has made contact, the game begins and she will arrive. Mary will appear somewhere at random, just outside roughly a 30 foot radius, in an unknown direction. Be wary of your movements, make no loud noises, be as hidden as possible. Your first goal is to get home. She will try any means to find you. She'll sneak, float and drift around the place, quietly inspecting the area. You can never get too complacent. She always has a sense of the vessel you have, so she'll always have a sense of your direction. But it's important to keep the vessel with you at all times. Never let it go. Mary will be easy to recognize. She's a young woman with deathly pale skin. Her blackened hair hangs precariously around her. She has a thin, almost emaciated frame, but don't let that fool you. No matter how strong you may be, you won't be able to overpower her. And worse, because of her light frame, she's deceptively fast. She cannot be killed, as in essence, she's a spectre. Her only ties to this world is the vessel you hold. 
She's tied to it in a strange way, but a way you can take advantage of. You may find yourself in a precarious situation. Say you need to go through a funneled path, fenced on either side, or an alleyway between some houses. A place where there's only A and B, and no other way to escape. What if she's waiting on the other side? What if she chases you, and you're not confident you can get to the other side in time? This is where the lighter comes in. Set part of the vessel on fire. As long as the vessel is on fire, so is she. In this flaming merry state, she'll be frantically darting around in pain. She's then easy to see, easy to hear. Use this to predict the timing to run through the area. This trick will make her movement predictable, but there are some drawbacks. As stated, she can't die. Also, though she's easier to see while on fire, so will you when you're holding what's essentially a flaming torch. There have been times where Mary has overcame her pain upon seeing the player holding their flaming vessel and attacked them viciously, driven to work fast because of the pain. If you choose to do this, be conscious not to drop the vessel if it burns you. You also have to be careful not to abuse this trick. If you burn the vessel too much, and you miss part of it falling off, the vessel is no longer complete. You can make the arduous journey to the end, complete all the steps to win, and find the game still going on. This is because, as long as that piece remains out there in the world, the game doesn't end. You will have to go back out and find it. What's worse is if she gets the fallen piece. If she does, consider the game lost. I have no way of helping you get it back. Like with fire, you can play with other things. Dipping the vessel's head in water can make it hard for her to see. In this state, for her, it'll be like trying to keep her eyes open underwater. Even if she does manage to do it, her vision will still be impaired. This is useful for scenarios where she's gotten too close, searching thoroughly, and your hiding spot isn't very good. Though be careful of abusing this trick too. If you make a pattern of it, she may pick up that her vision gets mysteriously impaired when she's coincidentally around you, prompting her to give up less easily. It's not smart to become predictable. This rule is especially true when you're trying to get home. It's recommended to not just make a beeline straight to your house. If she picks up you're always heading in one particular direction, she'll try cut you off. Her goal is to find your house before you, and either guard it or stop you from getting in. Make unpredictable movements. Keep a map and route towards a building, acting like it's your destination. Then, when she senses you're ahead of you, switch it up. You can never truly lose her, as she'll always have sense of when the vessel moves too far from her. But this will make her less hesitant about camping a building. You have to find balance. If you play around like this too long, you'll risk getting exhausted. The longer the game goes on, the more chance you have of slipping up. However, if you're too quick, it'll be like lighting a neon sign above your house, and she'll catch you out immediately. This is why I recommended earlier not to start near your house. If you start out rushing to get in to win, it'll be more like a game of chance than a game you can plan to win. With her speed, you don't want to challenge her to a race. If she makes it to your house first and guards it, the game becomes many times harder. She will never let up. As long as you can't get in your house, the game goes on. Games have lasted years like this, the player trying to bait her out, 
but she's smart, she's patient, and she has all the time in the world. You will never outweigh her. Some have tried fleeing, to lead a normal life elsewhere, but this only lowers their guard. Again, this is where her patience is her strong suit. She'll always have a general knowledge of your whereabouts. She'll stalk you from a distance, scoping out whether you fled as a trick or not. At their most vulnerable, the moment they take a shower, just as they're rubbing shampoo out of their eyes, the moment they turn off their lights to go to bed, the moment they find themselves alone on a remote road between cities, she'll strike. So, what do you do if she gets to your house first? Kill yourself? No, that means you lose. You don't want to lose. Losing isn't just for you, it's for the loved ones you bargain to. You took blood from family, a friend, and an enemy. Without you, she has free reign over your bargaining chips. I do not wish half of what you do to your loved ones are my worst of kin and I wish for 10% of the graces she'll bestow on your enemies. That's a common saying for the people who know of the full ritual. Maybe the people you love will happen upon the worst of accidents, and your enemy will get a mysterious inheritance. Her imagination is limitless. Too much for me to speculate. But I bet you can line up some interesting historical misfortunes and triumphs to the results of this ritual. Another stipulation to think about is that, when a game lasts a long time, never let any of your chips die. That can be just as bad as killing yourself. One time, a game lasted a few years. Whilst working hard, the player's beloved family member they bargained passed away. Imagine the previous fail state, but with you and the family members dead. This is why good planning is a must. But, these conditions about you dying or your bet becoming null, these are all scenarios in which the challenge becomes void. How does Mary win? It's simple. She has to complete the ritual. You essentially completed 90% of the ritual when you place the four drops of blood on the mirror and the three drops on the vessel. All she has to do is get a drop of your blood on the vessel and it'll be complete. Once the ritual is complete, you've given her everything. All your memories, memories of your family, of your friends and of your enemies. She'll take you over as a new vessel as gifted by you. She'll live your life and lead everyone you've cared about to ruin, whilst leading everyone you hate to great success and power. But none of this has to happen. You can still win, and best of all, you've known how to win this whole time. To do this, you have to get home Stand in front of your bloodstained mirror, hold the cursed vessel in view, stare at your reflection and say, Bloody Mary, three times. This will dispel Mary and any traces of her evil. You have won. So, what's your prize? It's simple. Power. Everyone close to you your family, your friends, anyone you care about, will all come into good fortune. Happiness will reign for the rest of your lives. Your enemies will roil in failure and pain, never knowing it was all caused because they crossed you. As you may tell, this ritual was from an era where family status was law. Bring power to your family whilst taking down your enemies was the mantra of this time. The family on top ruled. During these eras, some families would harbour a child, 
and train them their whole life for this ritual, whispering false encouragement that they were doing this for the good of the land, family duty being drilled into them since birth, unbeknownst that they were just a sacrificial lamb for their desire for power. It was a time where someone claiming you were a friend was a chance to bring you great fortunes or untold ruin. Even though we're out of these eras, the idea of family, friends and enemies is still prevalent. So, if you feel up for the task, then go ahead and try this out. I've never been a stickler for other people's safety, unlike the few others who know of this game. But no, the chance of great reward is prefaced with a chance of great failure.